G'day guys, how are you? And welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how you can use an override method within C Sharp. So let's begin. So we're going to create a quick console application, and this console application is going to have both a teacher and a student. So I'm going to create a class for those. So the first class will be student. Okay. And for our student, we want to have a first name. So I'm putting public string first name. Notice B from get and set. And we need to have also another public string, which will be the last name. And that can be also get and set. Okay. Now we're going to create a constructor, so public uh, student, oops, not stack, but student, and we'll go first name and last name, and then of course we now need to link those up, so this dot first name equals fn, and this dot last name equals ln. Awesome. Okay, so now we've got that, instead of just having to write in the first name and then space in the last name, what we can do is we create our own little method, and that will return the first name for us. So we'll go hit public string. And we'll just say this one get full name, okay? And then we'll go get, and then we'll simply just return um, students students name, and then we'll just go plus this dot first name with a space there, and then this dot last name, okay? So now simply, if I was just to run this application, I'll create a new student object. So equals new students, right now it's asking for the first name, so I put in Andrew. And now it's asking for the last name, so I put in Italy. Oops. New keyboard, still working it out. And so now if I go console right line, if I go now to student dot dot now I've got the options. I can of course change the first name if I wanted to because they are public. You can change these to protected or read only or whatever you may want to do. But in this case I just want to go to get full name. Okay, so there we go. And now if I run my application. We can see now the student's name, Andrew Everly. Okay, F fantastic, this program works a treat. However, if we're gonna teach, uh, create a teacher class now, and if you guys are well aware of programming, um, especially with classes, if I go now, new class, and just create a teacher class, I can now inherit by using these, um, I think they're called columns, and now I just put student there, I've now inherited the student class. So if you guys are not aware of like inheriting things, do check out another video on inheriting. I haven't actually got one, but there are many tutorials out there. Perhaps I'll create one in the future. I'll just explain a little bit about it. Um, I won't go into too much detail. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory really once it happens. Um, but yeah, do check it out. So when we inherit something, say if I wanted to get this exact same code here and I wouldn't have it in my teacher class, yes, I could just copy it and put it in there. But generally repeating code is not something that they recommend. You know, you should you should never really have to repeat code, you know, um, within when programming. So what we can do is we can inherit something. Okay, now we've already got a squiggly line here. This is because we've we've got a constructor with parameters, and this is telling us, well, hey, you need to do something about that because you cannot inherit something like that. So Visual Studio is pretty cool. It will actually create the constructor for us. So I can click on the globe here, and I can just go create constructor. I could have just typed it in, but Visual Studio was kind enough to actually do it for me. So that was saving time. If you were to create five hundred classes a day, that are all inheriting something. So here's our teacher class now. So if I wanted to, I can now go to teacher, just to show you guys a quick example, equals new teacher. I can put in the teacher's name, so let's put in here Harry James. Okay, and now if I just type in teacher, you can see now I've got most of the options um, from our student class because we've inherited those. So there was no need to actually copy that code into our class because we have inherited them. So what I need to do just before we go any further is I do need to link these up. So I'll just go this dot first name because remember we have that first name already equals fn, okay, and then this dot last name equals ln, just like that, okay. So there's our teacher name. So I could probably say this dot first name, and I can probably just write it to the console just to show you guys a quick demo of how that works. Okay, so let's just quickly run the application. What have I done there? There we go. So now when I run the app, you can now see the second line is Harry because that's the teacher's name, okay? Awesome. But let's say now, this is when we get into the override part, okay? So let's say now that we've got our, we've inherited our teacher from our, stu our student from our, to our teacher and we wanted to simply get the um, the teacher's name, okay? Because we have, or we've created that method, so we should therefore be able to use that method, okay? So let's delete that and we'll just write here, console to right line, and I'll just type here teacher, get full name. Okay, so I'm going to get the teacher's full name. I'm going to run the application. And there's our problem there. So we have indeed got our first name over there. But see there has student's name. We don't want that. We need to have that there for the teachers. But unfortunately with this particular method, that this string method we've created, 
um, it's going to return always the student's name first, and then it's going to add their you know the parameters or the um, variables that are set for first name and last name. So in order to fix this problem, we are now going to do learn about the override. So first things first, you need to change your original method to this. So you're going to have public virtual string. Okay, I'm not 100% sure what virtual means to be exact, but I do know that it is in C++ programming. Um, it's used quite often. Um, yeah, do some research if you want to have any more questions about that one. So type in public virtual string, get full name, okay? And now what we need to do is we need to come down to our teacher class here and now type in public override. Now Visual Studio is really cool at hold your hand when doing this. Type in override, press space, and literally it'll pop up with the one that it's probably expecting that it's going to be since it's the only virtual one there. If I was to type in override, if that wasn't virtual, then the full name would not appear, okay? Double click on that. Now Visual Studio will, of course, uh, try and help you complete code but since we want to change the student's name here to teacher's name uh, this won't work because it's, it's just going to simply return back to this method here this original one and yeah that's just not going to work at all so what I'll do is I'll just delete that part there that it's automatically filled in for me go to my curly braces I'm going to type in get and now I'm going to type in return and I'll type here teacher's name and now it's exactly the same as what we had before Oops, just like that. Awesome, so now let's run a program, see what we get. And there we go, we now have teacher's name. So we've managed now to override this particular method that we were referring to originally, we've overridden it, to then say teacher's name. So there we go, we've got teacher's name, we've got student's name. So let's just quickly clear this code, oh sorry, comment this code out, run the application, and it's referred back to the previous way, which was just student's name, but by using the override method, you can now get the say teacher's name. So there you go guys, there's just a quick tutorial on um, Override. There is a lot more to learn about it, but I feel that this is a good getting started um, way to learn about it because yeah, it, it can be a little bit to get your head around. And like I said, this is actually more to do with C++ programming. Um, in matter of fact, um, obviously um, C++ is a very, um, you know, they've definitely been inspired from that programming language, the C syntax for a C sharp. So if you guys have got any questions, do leave, leave a comment in the comment section. Thumb the videos up, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.